Welcome to the Rock Coder Space Invaders tutorial where we're going to take you step by step through the process of making the classic arcade game Space Invaders. To start with, load the Scratch project that's linked from the description of the YouTube file. This project contains all the costumes you'll need for the game, it contains all the sound effects you need for the game, it contains no scripts because you're going to be writing those yourself. So when you've hit the link you'll see a screen such as this one before you now. Hit the remix button and you're ready to start programming. We'll start off by adding a player sprite. So when the green flag is pressed, we want to set the position of the sprite, which is minus 160 by minus 160. We want to make sure it's using the correct costume, which is the player costume and we want to make sure we can see the sprite. When we can see the sprite, we want to be able to move it. So let's add a controlling loop, a forever loop, that says if I'm pressing use the sensing block, if I'm pressing the left arrow, then let's move left. Let's change the x-coordinate by minus four. If I've reached the edge of the screen, I don't want to allow him to move completely off the screen, so if the X position is less than minus 220, let's lock it onto the screen and set it to minus 220, so we can't go completely off the screen. Similarly, if we're going to press the right arrow, Again, the sensing block, if the right arrow is pressed, then we want to move four pixels to the right. If you've gone too far to the right, so if your X value is greater than 220, then we're going to lock it in at 220. So the X to 20. So if I play this game now, I can move right, I can move left. If I reach the edge of the screen, I can't move any further. So that's the player controls. You can see that the first bit of the code initializes the game. It sets the position for the player at the beginning of the game, it says this costume. The second bit of code is the actual gameplay code that repeats again and again, allowing me to move the base. I'm actually going to split this into two pieces. So I've got the code there that initializes it, and then I've got the code here that updates it. I'm going to say when I receive a message called initialize a game, that is when it's going to do the initialization. I haven't started playing yet. So he's going to hide the sprite. So I initialize the game, sets it up and hides the sprite. And then I have another event that says when I'm updating the player, make sure I can see the sprite. And then instead of doing it in the forever loop, just do it once. If I'm pressing left, move left. If I'm pressing right, move right. So I've got an initialize block and an update block. Go back to my manage game sprite. When the green flag is pressed, let's use those blocks. Let's broadcast initialize game. So that sets up the player to start at the beginning position. And then in a forever loop, let's repeatedly update the player. So we initialize the game and then forever update the player. Look into the player code, initialize the game, move him to his start position, update the player. If he's, move, if he's pressing left, move him slightly left. If he's pressing right, move him slightly right. So to look at the game, it is exactly the same. What we've done is we've introduced the concept of the game loop um, so we can see exactly how the game flows. We initialize the game and at the moment all we're doing is updating a player. But we're going to want some space invaders in there as well. So how about we update the player and then we update 
the invaders. So what that will have to do is go into the invader code. When we initialize the game, we want to set the space invader to start about this point on the screen. So we'll say, go to 220 by zero, pick the correct costume, which in this case is 3A, and we'll hide him because this is the initialization. We don't want to see him yet, but he's all ready to go. And so when we start updating the invader, this is where he wants to start moving. He's going to start moving to the right. We're going to use a variable for, to control this, a variable called direction, which is going to be for all sprites. I'm going to start it with a capital D. When he's initialized at the beginning of the game, he always wants to be moving right 16 pixels per time. So when I'm in date invaders, all I need to do is change the x coordinate by direction. So when the game's initialized, it sets the invader to this point on the screen, every update moves him slightly to the right. So if I, and I also need to show him in the update. So now if I run that, the invader goes. When he reaches the right hand side, he actually needs to drop down, change direction, and go to the left. When he reaches the left hand side, drop down, change direction, and go to the right. And that should continue until he lands. So after we've changed the direction, let's check to see if he's still on the screen. If we've gone too far, if the x coordinate is bigger than 220, then we want to swap direction. To do that, we can set direction to zero minus direction. So if it's 16, it becomes not minus 16, it's minus 16. Similarly, if it was going left and it was minus 16, it then becomes plus 16. So he swaps the direction, changes x by the newly swapped direction because he's gone past the edge of the screen so we bring him back on and drop him down the line. So we'll change the y by minus 32. So now we'll go across, drop down, move to the left. There's no check for the left hand side of the screen. When he reaches the left, again we want to swap the direction, move him back onto the screen and drop him down. So we want to run this exact same code. So to achieve this, we're going to use a block here called ABS, which is short for absolute. What this block does is it takes a value, maybe 10, and it returns a positive amount of value. So if it's already a positive value, such as 10, it just returns the same value. If it's a negative value, minus 36, it returns a positive of it, so plus 36. So instead of checking for x position is greater than this and also x position is less than minus 220, we can just check for the positive value of x being bigger than 220. Consider that x position, if it had become minus 300, the absolute of that is 300, which is greater than 220, we know he's gone up to the edge of the screen. So this code will work on both sides of the screen. And there it is in action. The only thing now is the game should complete when the invader has landed on the floor. So, if his y coordinate reaches the bottom, which is minus 160, then the game is over. Let's add a variable, let's call it game over question mark because it's true or false capital G because it's for all sprites when he's reached the floor let's say that the game over variable is now true in the manager before you start the game game over is false and instead of forever 
we're going to repeat until game over it's true so now initialize the game we set game over to false because the game isn't over and we update the player and update the invaders until game over is true game over is true when the invader is landed run the code watch the invader excitedly running towards the ground reach the ground code stops game over so we have implemented the very important game loop also called a tick system by many people what this does is initialize game and then allows us to completely control the flow of the program. We know that it's going to update the player and update the invaders until the game is over and then end. And this is a good place to end this tutorial. The next tutorial will add more code, add more fun and get this game going.